Basilisks are one of the most deadly creatures in the Harry Potter series. Rowling took inspiration for these creatures from ancient European legends. As she was writing the series, she made these creatures her own, expanding on them and making them fit into her amazing wizarding world. We saw only one basilisk in the series for a very brief amount of time, so I'm going to delve deeper into these creatures and break them down as I explain everything you need to know about the basilisk. The Basilisk is known as the King of Serpents. The creatures are bred, and most of the time they're bred by dark wizards. The first wizard to breed the creature was Herpo the Fowl, and just an added fact, he was the first to create a horcrux as well. Herpo bred the first Basilisk by hatching a chicken egg underneath a toad. When it hatched, the first Basilisk was born. Because they were serpents, the only people that could control them were parcel mouths, meaning people that could speak the language of snakes, parcel tongue. Herpo was one of the first known parcel mouths in history. Being a parcel mouth is a very rare gift. People aren't able to learn parcel tongue the way that people can learn Spanish. They have to be born and just innately know it. The only time that it isn't rare to have this ability is within the bloodline of Salazar Slytherin himself, who is one of the four founders of Hogwarts. The beast can live a natural life of at least 900 years. This can be extended, however. Salazar Slytherin made his basilisk live a thousand years, and it still had a lot more in it before it was killed. This can only be done by a parcel mouth, putting the basilisk into a deep sleep. This prevents the creature from aging, making it easy to add a significant amount of time to the beast's lifespan. The creatures have dark green skin that's very strong. It's armored, and the skin can even deflect spells shot at it. The beast can grow up to 50 feet in length, but the average length is about 20 to 30. They have yellow eyes, which is actually their deadliest weapon. If anyone looks directly into their eyes, they die. I died. How? I just remember seeing a pair of great big yellow eyes. However, as we saw in the Chamber of Secrets, if you make indirect contact with their eyes through a reflection or through a camera, then the victim will simply be petrified. If they are petrified, a draft mixed with juice from a fully grown mandrake can wake them up. The creatures shed their skin as they grow, just like a normal snake would. It looks like a... snake. It's a snake skin. Bloody hell! Their gender can be identified by a single scarlet plume on its head. If it has this, that means it's male. The basilisk's biggest weakness is roosters. The rooster's crowing can be deadly to the beast. The creatures eat any vertebrate animal, such as humans, birds, rats, and any other number of creatures like that. Just as the basilisk fears roosters, spiders fear the basilisk. The king of serpents is their greatest enemy. They flee from the beast, and Aragog, an acromantula, or a giant spider, refuses to even speak of it. We do not speak of it. It is an ancient creature we spiders fear above all others. The only thing that is known to be immune to the beast's deadly stare are phoenixes. They're also the only known cure to the creature's venom. They're able to use their tears to heal any basilisk wound. Basilisk venom, which comes out of their fangs, is deadly and kills you in a matter of minutes. Remarkable, isn't it? How quickly the venom of the basilisk penetrates the body. It makes the victim drowsy and have blurry vision before the venom finally kills them. It's also one of the very few things in the world that can destroy a horcrux. Their venom is so powerful that it can stay in their teeth for many years after the basilisk dies. We saw this in the Deathly Hallows when Ron and Hermione used its tooth to destroy Voldemort's horcruxes five years after its death. On a side note, because of this fact, fans speculated and came up with a theory that the Horcrux inside of Harry that Voldemort accidentally placed in him the night he tried to kill Harry as a baby should have been destroyed when he was injected with the venom while in the Chamber of Secrets. Rowling had a counter-argument to this, saying, The Horcrux receptacle has to be destroyed beyond repair, so Harry would need to have died. That's great, but with that said, there's one more piece of information that now doesn't add up. The ring. The stone on the ring is the Resurrection Stone, one of the Deathly Hallows. So after Dumbledore destroyed the Horcrux in the ring, shouldn't the stone have not worked anymore? As Rowling said, it has to be destroyed beyond repair. But it still works almost two years later, when Harry uses it to see his fallen loved ones. I'm sorry. I never wanted any of you to die for me. Rowling had a counter-argument to this as well. 
The crack in the stone was irreparable. Only Dumbledore could have extracted the soul fragment but left the original charm intact. Now, if just an irreparable crack is enough to be deemed destroyed beyond repair, that means that Harry doesn't have to fully die. A crack in Harry, or a wound, would mean that the Horcrux should have been destroyed. Of course, there are a few explanations for this, like the fact that the stone is a Deathly Hallow, so it's different than the other Horcruxes, or the wound on Harry was healed, so the venom didn't get to the Horcrux yet, or it stopped the process of destroying the Horcrux. Both of these are kind of a stretch, but I guess they work. Anyway, I got sidetracked, hopefully you guys enjoy that, but back to Basilisks. Basilisk breeding was banned in medieval times. To enforce this, the Ministry of Magic said that all chicken coops in the wizarding world are subject to their inspection to thwart this practice of breeding. It's very hard to breed these creatures, however, because as I said, the only people that can control them are those that can speak parcel tongue. There were a few cases before breeding was made illegal where dark wizards tried breeding them, but ended up getting themselves either in trouble or dead because they weren't able to control them without the ability of speaking parcel tongue. With the ban and the fact that very few people could control the beasts, the creatures became very rare, and before the 1940s, there had not been a single sighting of them since the 16th century. The only the only known basilisk in the series was the one that Salazar Slytherin placed in the Chamber of Secrets. Slytherin built the chamber in Hogwarts Castle without the other founders knowing. It was meant to rid the school of Muggleborns when his true heir came to the school to command the beast. This basilisk was about 20 feet long, meaning it was about average. The heir of Slytherin finally came to the castle in the 1940s. His name was Tom Riddle, who would later be known as Lord Voldemort. One day. I would be able to finish Salazar Slytherin's noble work. He found and opened the chamber and released the basilisk on the school, leading to the death of a girl named Myrtle Warren. After her death, he framed Hagrid and made everyone think that his Acromantula, Aragog, was the beast that came from the chamber and the one that killed Myrtle. Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets. Then you're not the monster. No. The basilisk stayed in the chamber for another 50 years until Riddle opened the chamber again in the 90s, using one of his horcruxes to possess Ginny Weasley. This time around, no one was killed, but the beast petrified four students, a cat, and a ghost. Colin saw it through his camera. Justin must have seen the basilisk through nearly head to Snick. Nick got the full blast of it, but he's a ghost. He couldn't die again. And Mrs. Norris? There was water on the floor that night. She only saw the basilisk's reflection. Both times the basilisk was released in the school, it traveled through the pipes. How's the basilisk been getting around? A dirty great snake, someone would have seen it. Hermione's answered that too. Harry went down to rescue Ginny Weasley from the chamber, and he had to fight the basilisk. Fox, Dumbledore's phoenix, who was immune to the deadly stare of the beast, took the beast's eye out, allowing Harry to look at it as he fought. Harry ended up stabbing and killing the beast with the sword of Gryffindor. Since then, there has been no basilisk activity, and they're back to being a very rare breed that very few people are allowed to, or even want to create. Thank you so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help grow the channel. You can follow me on social media, links are in the description, and look out for more great videos on the way.